Welcome to Street Stoics, the podcast where we discuss Stoicism, the ancient philosophy of living a good life. I'm your host, Bryce, and I'm joined by my co-host, Benny. We're here to help you apply Stoic wisdom to your everyday life, no matter what obstacles you're facing, whether it be work stress, relationship issues, or just the general ups and downs of life. Stoicism has something to offer us all. All right, here we are, Street Stoics podcast yet again. How you doing, Benny? Hey, I'm doing good, Bryce. How are you? Feeling a little bit wiser? I like to think I'm getting wiser with my age. I mean, we're going to talk about wisdom and the definition, and that's a lot more complex than people might think. But yeah, I like to think so. So, I mean, if you say I'm wiser, I'm good to, I'm good to roll with that. So yeah, yeah, I'm wiser. All right, good to know. Good to know. You know, just say it comes with age. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get there at one point as well, though. But does it really? See, we'll get into that a little bit. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It actually, it, there, that is a function of it, but... Uh, but yeah, it'll be a great conversation. So yeah, today we are talking about wisdom in a general sense and then also in a stoic sense. So what we've been doing, especially with the four cardinal virtues, you're going to hear kind of a similar pattern. You know, we're, we're trying to, you know, define what that word is. We take so many words for granted and, you know, what the definitions are. And really, it's important when you're having these conversations, uh, you know, any conversation to you know, figure out how are we seeing these concepts, right? Are we seeing it the same way? And sometimes it can be comp- complicated. So I'll start out by saying, hey, Benny, what do you think the word wisdom means? Or what does it mean to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, well, what? And I think that that's something that a lot of people ask themselves when when we talk about these words. And, and I think a lot of people actually don't ask themselves these questions, which is which is still kind of, which makes it all trickier, right? When we hear all the words like, you know, we've had the cardinal virtues, you know, wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance, but also things like success, failure, um, all of these things, we use them without really knowing what they what they mean. So when we talk about wisdom, I think a lot of people think about someone who's smart, intelligent, right? But when I think about it, it's more of that, the, the application of, of knowledge, the application of experience, um, and putting it all, making the best use of, all the tools that you have. And I think that that is also, uh, that is a big part of, of wisdom, right? It's not something that is, yeah, it's not as tangible, I think, as people think. It is quite a, it is quite a, a, a concept that is out there. But if I look at it, it's the, it's like the accumulation of your knowledge, your experience, uh, your judgment, um, all of these things together, and then applying them and and you know bringing it back to the Stoics, the rational and logical way. I think that that is where wisdom really meets the rest of the world, the rest of your your input and in in how you view the externals and how everything comes in, right? All the input that you get, and then kind of your processor, maybe you know maybe that's the best way to kind of look at it. The wisdom, the wise um, aspect of a person is your processor, is where you you gather the data and you you kind of make sure that you use the right date and the right moment when it when it's needed. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? When you dig into this, you you know, you snap your fingers and think, oh, wisdom is, is somebody's, you know, it applies to somebody who's intelligent or highly intelligent. There's an age factor. We were talking about that just a few minutes ago, right? I tend to think of an older person who has knowledge or has thought on things for a while. So what you said Plus what I'm going to talk about here, it all applies. I mean, in reality, it's really complex and it's, you know, it's a multifaceted concept that's really been pondered by, you know, philosophers and thinkers for a long time. I remember, uh, you know, reading other books on philosophy in college and, and just for my own pleasure, right? Remember in Plato's Republic, I mean, you have Socrates talking uh, to his peers, right, about what does the word justice mean and, and him using his you know, his Socratic method really to break it down. Like everybody thought they, there was multiple people who had different definitions for justice and they were so sure of what it meant. And it's ironic too, because that's one of the other uh, four cardinal virtues we've yet to talk about, but we will in future episodes. You're left sitting there saying, hey, what does the word really mean? So wisdom could apply in that way too. So that, that kind of, I think a common definition is people just think of uh, somebody who is smart, and uh, has had some time to uh, maybe suss some of these things, uh, some of these ideas out, some of these the knowledge that they've uh, learned. Other people say it's knowledge of what's true or right. You know, maybe coupled with some judgment and discernment, like you like you mentioned before. And all of that is true, right? And even like it's a uh, something I thought about too, because I just 
whiteboarded my own ideas. It's like this capacity to have foreknowledge, right? It's it's not just the knowledge that I've taken in, but by processing that knowledge and further having some experience dealing with it, that maybe I can predict outcomes in the future. Something that Socrates had brought up as it relates to wisdom that I kind of added to, he talked about it, it being knowledge and application of that knowledge, right? And and to build it out further, here's my definition of wisdom. It's it's knowledge, right? So it's trying to find out what is true, what is true and right and good, right? Taking that information and then applying it. And then once I've applied, uh, been uh, applying my and intellect to that knowledge, doing something with it, right? It's very active. It's not just knowing something. It's now I have to do something with it, right? We can all read uh, information in books. We can be book smart, but are are we really wise just having that information? No, I can just recite information. So the next step is to apply it. So I'm going to you know, use my intellect. I'm going to use my life skills, what I've learned to try to take that knowledge and turn it into something useful. And then from there, I have to judge those outcomes, right? So there's where judgment comes in, into play. And, and Stoics are big about judgment. You know, what am I doing with that knowledge plus the application? There, there's an output there I have to do something with. And then to me, the last part is time. And we can argue about this one, Benny. I, I think to be wise, really, you have to have, you have to have knowledge. You have to apply it, right? Then you have to judge that knowledge and you have to have multiple I think multiple experiences doing that to kind of find your best practices so for me wisdom is is applied knowledge that we have some experience with either direct or indirectly to refine it to say not only do I know this but I know how to use it and of the times I've used it I have basically a, a a a master plan or or specific ideas that it just works better using it this way much like i was thinking what's a good analogy like a doctor right a doctor has a practice they have a certain level of intellect right of how they process knowledge to get through medical school then they have to take the data in from the patient and their test test results and such and so they t- they take those two things and they get some sort of output and then they have to judge that, right? And they and so over time you have enough patience. That's why they call it a practice. You keep you keep applying, applying, applying. I'm going to try this to deal with with this problem. I'm going to try that. And in and, and through those patient experiences, you come up with best practices. So that's your wisdom. My wisdom is really a refined knowledge that you have to go through all those steps. And it takes discipline to do that. So to be the wise person in my mind. It's a function of time. It's a function function of effort and judgment, and then also a desire, really, to go capture as much new information as possible. This is a very active. This is good for Stoics, right? Because it's very action oriented. So I hope that's not too many moving pieces, or to make it feel like people can't get access to wisdom because you can. It's just it's really having a desire to get information, do something with it, making a a. a a judgment about it. We'll talk about stoic wisdom because that's where the judgment. But then, and, but but looking at that over time, and and then holding on to that, it's like gold. It's been refined through fire. Yeah, I like that. And uh, and what what it made me think about as well is uh, that that people don't necessarily have to be wise in in general sense, right? You can be wise with specific things, um, as you said. You know, a, a, a doctor or you know with some kind of profession. I think, for example, a carpenter or um, you know, someone with a with a specific job. You know, he's a nurse or you know something like that. They have wisdom and their trade, right? And their skills, as you said. You know, we all have our life skills, and some people can be wise. Uh, for example, as a teacher or you as an IT person, right? It's a do you have that specific knowledge about the specific things, and that's where you can apply that knowledge and wisdom. You know, that wisdom comes out. Then people ask you stuff about what you are good at, about your skills. You can then relate to that and give them the right answer, you know, the best answer. But also, if you are passionate about it enough, if you really care about it, you want to develop yourself. And I think that that is one of the big aspects of wisdom as well. Like the wise person is usually someone who is humble, someone who is uh, curious, who knows that, uh, you know, the famous uh, saying, like, I know that I know nothing. That is someone who is who is uh, who is wise, knowing that you still have to keep developing yourself and 
for me, those aspects are very important as well that you uh, know that, well, because once you tell yourself, hey, I know everything, that's pretty much where you go downhill, right? And that's where the arrogance, that's where um, someone who doesn't listen, someone who doesn't look at the full picture, someone who doesn't, um, you know, look at the all sides. So for me, the wise person is one who is able to see that, hey, you know what, my opinion might not be right, so let's look for the right one. And again, there's this, you know, if you think about yourself in your life, right, If it, that, this is some, one of the questions that I ask myself when I talk, talk or when I think about a topic like this. It's like, okay, who do I judge a wise, wise person in my life? Because we can go to like the books, you know, like Socrates, like the, the Stoics, but there's people around us in our lives where you would go to for advice. So if you take a second and ask yourself, okay, who is the person that I would go to for advice, you know? I have, for example, my, my parents, you know, for my, my father, I would go for certain things. My mom, I would go to things, but I also have my sisters. So there are specific things that I would go to for with someone and even friends, you know, I have like friends and I was like, okay, I need to know about this. Who can I ask? So for me, it is, um, there are wise people and specific skills, but you also have wise people in general. It's just about life. So for me, that is kind of a, a, a apart from the definition, right? Because that's really important to know. And I think, now, you know what you'd said and what, what I mentioned before, that's kind of the, the general definition and we look at the, the stoic side, but also that kind of that, that practical example, um, ex, you know, those examples that we have in our own life, that is also a good way to, to find that personal definition of what is wise by applying that kind of, you know, the title of wise to the people around you and say, okay, you know, I just kind of classify them this way. And then you can see some kind of attributes of people who you consider to be wise. Now, most of the people that I that I would go for advice, you know, to advise uh, my, to get advice from is calm people. You know, people who listen, people who are ready to look at, um, uh, analyze, and and really look at your situation from the best side and give you honest advice. You know, that's something that I, you know, would add as well to say, hey, you know, what are your examples of a wise person? So I think that that is a um, that is just something that I want to add there. And also that time aspect, right? As you mentioned, it's about experience. So as we grow, usually it's with age, but that's not necessarily, right? There's so many examples where people say, oh, you know, I've aged so much in, in, in this short time frame because of a certain um, drastic experience, something that really happened, maybe a traumatic experience that really makes you you grow up faster. Why? Because you have to deal with stuff in a in a more direct way, you have all these inputs, all these things, and you have to apply all your knowledge to it. So y your brain starts to run at overdrive, and you just have to find a solution as best as possible. And then you can, you know, trigger that knowledge, wisdom, all of them together to, you know, sometimes it's just survival mode, right? You, you just go into survival mode and you find the right answer. So I think that that is an important part as well to, to, to get, you know, to get some examples and also to have all those experience that you, you know, that you do, that you have for, but if I think about the wise person, usually it's a it's a humble person, curious, ready to explore the world, explore themselves, and then and then grow from that side, right? Yeah, that's just what I wanted to add to, and I think it's it's good to look at the stoic side as well. But uh, if if you think about your examples, Bryce, w would you be able to kind of create a picture of a wise person uh, from that from that side? From yeah, that way. Yeah, I mean, in a gen, we'll stick with the general sense because I think it's there's value in just just getting to all the little tentacles of the definition, right? So if people, those listening walk away from here, they'll, they'll, they'll be experts on wisdom, right? And I agree with what you said. And, uh, you know, wisdom is not something that's necessarily automatically acquire, uh, acquired with age or experience, but it, it requires active effort, right? And we can cultivate that. This is a general wisdom, right? And so things like you were talking about, it's like, you know, if I'm seeking knowledge in general, if I'm reflective on my experiences, um, you know, if I'm uh, listening to others, right, important traits, uh, and um, most important, like living with integrity, and that starts to dovetail us into kind of the stoic view, uh, the ethical view of what, what wisdom means. But to me, I open myself up to be a wise person, right? So I, all my doors are open, and I'm approaching everything, you know, the world in good faith, and so I allow myself to succeed at, at that level. And I would ask you, Benny, is we were talking about age and I would say to outside of age, right? It, to me, it's more, you know, the, the, the example that I used about with the doctor 
And then you were you were talking we we're talking about fields, right? And in your other jobs, where you, it's really that's really an expertise. But you can be wise in your in those experiences, right? Wisdom is something that's grown organically. Do I have to have lived all these experiences myself, or can I acquire wisdom from others? Some there, there is an argument about that. I believe you that it's most important that I have my own practices, right? We were talking about those steps, the application and the judgment, but I'm not going to, I only have so much time on this earth and I'm not going to have the ability always to experience things before it, 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 fate pushes it in front of me. I have to make some decisions. And so if I have knowledge and I, and I think, and if I've learned from other people, I can glean from their wisdom, right? And accept it as my own, as we've been talking about Seneca's letters and, and other conversations we've been having recently is the truth has no master right and i and i think wisdom is something that we can borrow that's why we study people who are excellent in what they do right why i don't have to learn this stuff firsthand i can try to and and i would like to but i think i think there's a shortcut there that isn't a cheat and that's just by studying uh, excellence and in trying to glean the wisdom that's what we do here with uh, you know this podcast, right? We're looking back thousands of years to try to pull in this stuff and, and, and these ideas and this knowledge and these uh, you know these these firm ideas and solutions or, or or frameworks. They were developed over time and a lot of thinking. So I can accept that as my own and, and practice with it along the way. But I think we can absorb wisdom, right, and save some time. What do you think? Completely agree. The only thing that I would would maybe change or add is when you said at the last point, part, you know, to study excellence. I would say per, perhaps to study, you know, failure or, or you know, the the lack of success because that's where you can really start to build on the things that uh, that people got wrong and 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 maybe do it differently. Because if you look at people who are of success, right, the the problem there is that it's um, you don't see the steps that they've taken, right? You don't see what it made them to get there and. There's that saying, you know, what you only have to succeed once, but you probably fail a hundred times. But that success will come because of those failures. But yeah, if if I think the the wise person is in its nature an observer, someone who can look at the things around them and say, hey, you know what, this is happening. This is probably not, you know, the right way according to me. Right? There is no right. I think there's no single or right way of doing things, but. There's a way of doing it according to your nature, right? That's pretty, you know. That's what the Stoics say: to live in your nature. So when we when we become that observer of the world around us, and we do it in a way without judgment, right? And that's something that is also really important. But we do it in an objective way and say, okay, you know, these people are doing this, and, and mm, that might not be the best way. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take a little bit from that. And I'm going to do it my way. So. I would I would add to I, I agree right there is a sh- shortcut to it because we don't necessarily need to experience everything, but we can say okay this is happening so maybe I need to prepare myself for this or maybe I need to do it this way and if you become that observer you can skip those steps of other people's lessons you can learn from them you don't have to undergo them yourselves but you can just say okay because there's there's so many lessons to be learned around us if we just keep our eyes open and I think that that's something that a lot of people miss and lack. Um, we have all this input from from all the devices around us, from from everything that happens. Yet we fail to see what really matters, right? We fail to look at where it really impacts us in in our daily actions and and in the on the path that where we want to go. So I think to the wise person, and it is not necessarily attached to age, as we talked about. I think it's attached to the amount of experiences that you undergo yourself but also the amount of experiences that you can up, uh, obtain from the people around you and learn from them. Because we, I think there are plenty of examples of old people who are not wise, right? I think there's plenty of examples of, so if it was only according to age, everybody who would be in a certain age, you would, you would get wiser and wiser and wiser, but that's not the, that's not the, the, uh, the, the real world, right? That's not what's happening because we can see, I think everybody can have examples of people who aren't wise at an old age, while there will, might be young people uh, who are wiser than, than older people. So I think it's the accumulation of experiences, of willingness to learn, keeping an open mind, that curiosity. And as you said, you know, that shortcut is there to learn from other people's mistake and just jump ahead. And I think that that's why it's, um, 
it is important to look at excellence, right? Because I think if you have a certain goal, that's what the Stoics try to emulate the sage to say, hey, this is the perfect person, right? This is what we want to go to. So let's try to do it. Let's try to uh, let's try to achieve and, and try to uh, work towards that goal. But in the meantime, we all make mistakes. We all make these, you know, uh, we have to make those steps because we're not perfect. So I think in that sense, we can say, okay, you know, let's look around us, what's happening, what's happening in nature, become that observer, and then accumulate the wisdom. Not try to say if someone, for example, the same thing with if someone gives you bad feedback, negative feedback is our ego is just trying to kind of push that away. Say, hey, you know, that's not good for me. You know, that's someone trying to tell me I'm not doing the best way. I'm someone telling me I'm wrong. But if we are trying to get as much knowledge and information we can collect to become better, we can say, okay, that feedback is neither negative nor positive, it's feedback. Let's see what I can do with it. Let's see how it applies to me. Let's see where I need to improve. Let's see what I can take. Let's see what I can put away. But we can use it. And I think that that, for me, is one of the aspects of a wise person who looks at all this information, as you mentioned a lot of the times, you know, data points. And that really, I think that is one of those techniques to really get that emotional sting out of it. If say, these are data points, let's just take them, observe them, process them, and then use them in the right way. So, and that is for me kind of the, the, the way that I see, you know, what you said, and especially in connection with age, but also to become that observer, right? To make sure that you study everything. Excellence, but I think in, in, a, in a greater de- degree, uh, the, the failures, the negative sides. I would say though, you know, since it, it is based on experience, right? We talked about, it's not just knowing things. Oh, and by the way, you're absolutely right. You know, I got plenty of people who are older who are not wise, right? And, and further, you could say, I, I know people who are intelligent, but don't have much knowledge, right? Or they don't, they lack the discipline. So it, it's kind of a waste or I have knowledge, but I don't have the ability to apply it in, at a high level. Or, or again, I don't have that discipline to, to take those steps. So really the highest compliment you can give somebody is to tell them that they're wise. But I think in a general sense, though, I think it's safe to say that the older we get, you just, if you have these precursors already in place, you know, I'm open to knowledge. I'm going to try to apply it. I'm listening to others. I have humility. I have this integrity, right? I have these other good byproducts of wisdom, insight, empathy, humility, all these types of things. If, if I, if I'm leaning that way, then over time, I am going to get wiser with age. Because lots of times when we think of those with wisdom, we're always thinking of these, you know, especially with philosophy, these old men with long white beards, right? So it's, it, it's, not, it's not a male thing. We always talk about a, a lot about leaning into the men part of it, especially with Stoicism, right? It was just that's the way the world was. The texts were written that they usually refer to, to men. But this applies, of course, to women and, you know, plenty of brilliant, smart, wise women out there too. And so anyways, those qualities, I think having those in place, those precursors uh, allows us over time that there are, that's one of the benefits of age, right? So I, I, will, I will say age does have something to do with it, but, but you could be wise in a younger person if you have a ton of experience in, in you know, whatever that you're talking about. There, there, you have, like I like to say, with the IT trade, I've worked with people who've been employed for a long time. And I found out there are people with 20 years experience and people with one year of experience times 20, you know, do the math there. So it's just, so their value is, is, is not a function just of time. But I did want to give kind of a, a shout out to uh, 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 the older folks here. because I'm, I'm a little older than Benny, uh, but you know, I, I just I'm more seasoned, I'm more wise. So I will take that. I will hold that over Benny in, for this specific conversation. That's so I've, I want to make sure to. You. Yeah, that's good to know, and <laughs> it's also good to know that it's not about the beard. You know, it's like I might just be able to shave it off. Then I thought, like, okay, if I just grow this beard out and it turns white, I'll be wise. You know, like Gandalf, and and I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe maybe Bryce with his years ahead of me can can kind of lead the example. But you know, sometimes I say like, hey, you know what? Maybe that beard doesn't do all of it. You know, but, uh, <laughs> well. Ironically enough, Benny and I both have beers, uh, beards. I'm getting a little gray in mine. I don't. I think he's probably avoided that to this point, but I'm telling you, it's coming, my man. So uh, embrace the gray beard. I see the little sparks of wisdom coming up. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's little shoots of wisdom coming through my face <laughs> all the time. So, anyways, no good stuff. So then, so let's. And I, I kind of, 
Yeah, I wanted to ask you one question that I was like, because we did the same with the other virtues. And like, I wanted to ask, like, why, why do you think that courage over oh, courage? No, why do you think that wisdom is a virtue? What, what do you think that that is like? Uh, because we, we have like, uh, when we, before we kind of go to the stoic side, it's like, what do you, what, what do you think that wisdom classifies as a virtue? Well, I mean, for stoics, right? There's these, you know, they classify everything as kind of, uh, you know, there's like three different main categories of how we, examine people's values, right? You know, you have, they think about internals versus externals, and then there's some different things. So they looked at, that's a great question, by the way, they looked, they looked at life in a way, well, they, they focus more on the internal, right? The only, the only good is, is through virtue. So they identified these four cardinal virtues, wisdom being one of them, as if you have these four things, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance, those four virtues, and there's other virtues, right? But they studied it and thought about it. They said, if, hey, if I have these four core things, then they believe you had enough to, uh, enough to essentially lead a good life, right? And so you can get that harmony. You can get that peace, what they call eudaimonia. They think wisdom is one of those things. And so why is it, why is it a virtue? Well, I, th I think it's critical uh, to how I live my life. It's, it's how I acquire knowledge. It's how I process that knowledge. What do I do with knowledge? And further for Stoics, as a lead into that, it's how they judge what is good and bad, right? I have to constantly, constantly be looking at what's happening around me or, or is it indifferent, right? Happening around me and then doing something with it. So Stoic, Stoicism based, is based in virtue ethics, right? So it's uh, ethics are critical to leading the good life. It's really the only, only thing that you need to focus on to have that, you know, that good harmonious life. So, you know, wisdom as it relates to other virtues, I mean, Hey, there's lots of other good virtues out there. I just think since we're talking about the collection and processing of information and then trying to make a clear judgment about it, is it good, bad, or indifferent? And then I, that, that sets up the actions I'm going to take in my life. Yeah. I like that, you know, and, and, uh... Especially how you looked at the, the, you know, the internal versus the external. And I think that that's why when we talk about wisdom as a virtue, we look at, and I like to think back at that first principle thinking, you know, uh, to go back, like, okay, what is the root of it all? And um, we, as philosophers, you know, philosophy is the, the love of wisdom, right? So that's where it's kind of, you know, starting off, you know, just the word itself for me is that. And it shows us that it's, that it's the very beginning, right? Wisdom is the very beginning to, in order to, to, to learn, to grow, and to, to discover the truth. That's what the Stoics wants. That's what philosophy wants, right? The philosophers want to know the truth because that's the only reality that we can make the best actions on, right? That's how we, as you said, to, dis to discern what is good and what is bad. We need to know what is external, what is internal, and, and then know what is the truth. And from that point, we can determine what our best course of action is. And for me, that's why it, it all boils down to, you know, with the other, barring the other three cardinal virtues, we have wisdom that is the the center of it all. That is your your um, and as the Stoics call it, you know, your part that the logos has given to you, the divine spark, right? The re reason and logic. That that's the that's the special thing that if we look at all the other animals on the on the planet, that is what sets us apart, and that's where wisdom comes from. So when I look at it as a virtue, it's that that really core center part of of who we are as a human being. We have that capability of, of looking at things differently, right? Looking at reality from, from our own point of view with our consciousness, but then wisdom comes over to um, kind of quiet or maybe, you know, put the ego, put the emotions a little bit aside when we need to make those critical decisions. So for me, that's why it's kind of a, um, uh, that's why it's for me a, a virtue, a cardinal virtue, and probably one of the most important ones but yeah, we say that about all the virtues, right? Yeah. We talk about them. So well, that's, that's a difficult one. I think there's, there's like so a good synergy, right? There's so many virtues, right? That you outside, I always say, well, why did they always focus on these four? And it was a process that's something we can talk about in the future. But I mean, they went through a process and they just felt like, what I like about Stoicism is that they try to keep it simple. Really, Stoicism to me is less about 
all giving you all these specific things you must do, you know, like maybe a religion would do, do this here, do this there. I mean, they do give you advice. They do say in this situation, this is what you would do or probably be doing, but it's about reducing the noise. It's about reducing the clutter. It's about simplifying things. So I kind of like it that they have, they felt that these four virtues were enough that they would suffice that if you could cling to them and using, like you said, wisdom is really the foundation, right? It's the foundation for the good life, you know, and it's acquired right through, through study and practice. So this is, again, the Stoics are very much action oriented, you know, living in the moment, don't worry, they're, they're doing those things. And it gives me the ability to see things clearly and make sound judgments. I need that for all things. It, it really is. It really is the foundation. It, 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 it's the key to happiness and contentment, you know, and, and the cool thing about it is it's, it's something that you can and should share, right? You're, you're, this is something you can pass down, you know, to friends, to family, to, uh, to anyone, right? Future generations. And that, and that's constantly pushed too in the writings. Again, going back to Seneca's letters, I mean, he's talking to Lucilius, you know, and it's this other conversation we're having inside and going through those letters. And that's what he's doing, right? He's passing down his knowledge, his wisdom down to Lucilius to try to give him a leg up, to try to help him, uh, you know, pro progress in, in the most efficient way and try and help him avoid pitfalls. Maybe things Seneca went through himself. We don't know 100%, but we speculate that. And so th this is this is the the value of wisdom, why, why, why it's so, not only is it so important as a foundation, like you said, but you know, what, what can we do with it and more specifically what Stoics can do with it. So from a Stoic perspective, you know, what do you think, uh, how else would you build out the Stoics view of what wisdom is and why it's important? Yeah, I think, you know, exactly what you were, what you were saying, you know, it's uh, reducing the noise, making it simple, going back to the basics. I think that that's where what the Stoics kind of want to, they want to point you towards, right? As Zeno said, to live in accordance with nature. And that brings you right back to the center, right back to where it starts. And that is that is wisdom. And when I think, you know, uh, about wisdom and where it comes into with the, the other virtues, why they are important, because you can also use wisdom in the wrong way, right? There's also people who have knowledge about things and put it into application for their own benefit, maybe for to hurt others, right? To manipulate others. So, that's where you have justice, you know, that's where you have uh, temperance and you have courage to do the right thing. So that's where they all are needed to guide wisdom in the right direction, because it, it is also able to, we are also able to use it in the in the wrong sense. So when the Stoics talk about um, wisdom, and as you mentioned, that judgment, that judgment needs to be steered in the right direction to say, hey, okay, you know what, you can be wise, you know, if that were the only, if that were the only virtue and everybody said, okay, I'm going to be wise then we can use that in many different ways. That's why the other virtues need to be there uh, and to steer it in the right direction. Maybe we can, you know, use the analogy of having a, a going on a trip where they sit in a car, right? And, and, and wisdom might be on the, on the steering wheel, but justice might tell you, okay, this is the direction where you got to go. Temperance might say, okay, go faster, go slower, uh, do this and that. And courage might say, okay, you've got to keep driving. You've got to keep going. So that's why I think that they are really important just as a, as a, as a set, right? But where where Stoics say, okay, wisdom is really important because that's pretty much what all philosophy was about. The, the, that's why they had all those discussions with the Epicureans, with uh, with uh, you know the academics, with the cynics, where they said, okay, no, this is the truth. This is this is the truth. This is what I how I observe it. So that was the age old discussion. And and as you said, you know, it it is for us to share it as well. And that's what we're doing. I'm not, you know, especially not myself, maybe. You know, Bryce, uh, he, he might be, you know, wiser than me, but we are, we, we do believe that we are, have something of value to share with people. And that's why we're doing this, right? That's why we're doing these podcasts and, and, and on other platforms, sharing what we think is important for people to, to know, but we're also ready for other people, for people to tell us and to hear from them and to listen to them. So I think it is on, on specific areas, it is that key, right? It's also just because we want to grow and, and if we learn more, we can uh, train our brains to become more knowledgeable and, and to, to expand our, our views of the world. Uh, for example, that's one of the reasons why I love the travel, just to expand, you know, to learn other cultures, learn other languages and all those experiences, you know, and you used before, you know, people have a certain expertise. 
that again comes from experience. And that's what the Stoics also say. You know, we, we got to live life. We got to uh, be present in life. We got to learn to apply it. And that's where our wisdom comes to play. So for me, that's kind of how the Stoics, uh, you know, see in and why I think that they chose wisdom to be one of the, the specific items of, of the virtues, right? So I don't know if that, uh, if that added a little bit to the dead rice from my, you know, from my wise brain. Well, you're a little less wise than me because you're younger. No, that doesn't. We call you. We call you Benny the Younger. Uh, nice. Good name for you. But no, what you said totally makes sense. And and just to build on that even a little bit further, you know how important wisdom is to Stoics. Like, you know, I'll give you a few quotes that are good examples. So, you know, Marcus Aurelius said, you know, wisdom as the foundation of a virtuous life. This is the quote he used: "Is wisdom is not cleverness; it's the right use of knowledge." Right. Think about it. that's just what you're talking about right now. You're saying, hey, you can use knowledge the wrong way uh, in many different ways. So it's the right use of that knowledge. And then when you think of like pursuit of self-knowledge, Epictetus said the most important thing to know is how to learn. There's no shame in not knowing you don't know. The shame is not wanting to learn. Right? That's that first point. You know, it's a, it's acquiring information. You need that before you can, you know, process it or try to use your you know, your, the gifts of the logos, right? Logic and reason, that's part of our intellect, right? That's what we're filtering through. We're taking this data and, and filtering it through that and passing it along, making those decisions. And then those decisions, and plus maybe a little bit of time or definitely experience, make us wise. You know, Seneca said, we suffer more often in imagination than reality, right? That's a, that's a famous quote from him. So that's kind of a guide to rational action, right? Through my wisdom. It's like, I, I know this, be, that that's, that's a process that I've learned over time that a lot of my problems are imaginary or our problems are imaginary. It's what we fear in our minds. You know, so this is, there's, there's others that go on one more, you know, uh, is, as it relates to adversity, you know, and resilience as a function of wisdom, you know, Marcus really says what happens to a man is not determined by what happens to him, but by the attitude he takes towards what happens to him. So again, that's that's an, uh, that's a point of resilience and 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 uh, you know standing up in, in the face of adversity. So it is critical, and we can't know from an ethics point. And Stoicism is really based in ethics, right? The good life is all about my virtue. Virtue is the only good. Living the virtuous life is really uh, my only purpose as a Stoic. And we talked about purpose in our last episode, right? So I need to be wise to judge what is good, what is moral, what is upright, and then what isn't, and then make decisions based on that because fate determines so much of our life. There's so many things that are out of our hands. We're eliminating that noise like we were talking about before. That's what stoicism is great at and making my focus very narrow, but I do have decisions to make. And I can eat, the only time I'm going to fail is when I don't make that virtuous decision, but I have to know what is virtuous. Right? I have to know what's moral, what's upright, and as long as I'm doing that through my wisdom, I'm going to have access to that good life, right? I'm going to find that eudaimonia. I'm going to find that peace and tranquility because I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. I'm using those four cardinal virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. And wisdom might be the greatest of them all. And I love the quotes that you brought up. You know, uh, it's always good to... These quotes, especially we've talked about this, about Marcus Rudy's, especially again in the simplicity, that's where the power lies, right? And I just wanted to kind of add one of from Seneca where he says in one of his letters, he says, the wise man is content, right? The wise man is content with what he, what, what he or she has in the moment. And I think that that is also something that shows that the wise person or someone who has wisdom is focused on the here and now, right? You mentioned the internal or the external so wisdom and, uh, you know, the virtues, the Stoics are really focused on the internal, but also on the moment right here, right now. That's where it all matters. So if we look at the, the when we see, for example, people using wisdom in the wrong sense, they might be projecting it to the future or maybe to the past or but something that is outside of the now. While, while Seneca says, you know, the wise person is content and the wise person is content with, with him or herself. While we, you know, we don't shy away, we, we, you know, we try to seek out social contacts and everything, but when it comes down to it, we can be comfortable with ourselves. Why? Because we know that everything that we need is right here with us, right? And that's why that, that again, you know, why, why virtue, why wisdom is a virtue 
is because it's at the center of it all and we have to keep it close to us but also be ready to share so no i, I love those quotes and it's it's good to have them and to keep, to remind ourselves of those and you know if if you if you feel like sometimes it's difficult to remind yourself or to do to to use them as your support write them down in a little book that's what the people used to do back in the day the stoics you know we we've uh, we've seen the enchiridion by uh, by arian you know it wasn't written by epictetus it was written by one of his students and why because he wanted to be reminded of the lessons that he've learned from epictetus so that's something that we can also do so in that sense arian was a wise person why because he knew that he he was humble enough to say hey i can't remember this in the right moment i need to carry this with me as a reminder and that's something that we can do as well. We have like techniques to journal, you know, to just reflect on our, uh, on our thoughts, on ourselves, the meditation. All of these things are tools for us to to help us to become more wise, right? To use that to accumulate that that knowledge. Because I can I can hear people think like, oh, you know, it's it's good to read all these wise people, but I'm not there. Right? It's it's uh, how how do I become wiser? Well, there are techniques. That's something that you can try to 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 learn from, right? To to exper- uh, to experiment with different ways journaling as i said you know or or just meditation deep reflection asking yourself questions like okay what happened here you know kind of reflecting back on what happened that's where you can really take that knowledge out of the experiences you've had because it's 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 good we talked about experiences it's good to experience them but a lot of the time we just kind of move over them right things just pass and we just go from one moment to the next but at certain times we need to take that pause take a moment to sit back reflect on what we've learned, reflect on our experiences, really look at what it meant to us, the impact that it had, and then we can use them and galvanize them and make that part of us who we are and learn to grow from it. And I think that that's one one of the aspects that when we look at the Stoics and when you read someone like Epictetus, he's quite harsh, right? It was something that I like personally, but he's quite harsh. And he's like, okay, you know, all of these lessons, you need to apply them. You need to use them. And there's one a quote that's out there. It's a bit paraphrased from one of his letters. He's like, you know, drag us out of the classroom and we're we're lost, right? It's again, I paraphrase that one, but that's what it is. You know, we can learn all these things, but we if we don't really internalize the lessons from life, we are still lost. So, yeah. So when people ask, like, hey, how can I become wiser? I think that that would be a great step to do it, right? To reflect, to look back, and use those tools that we've we've you know we usually mention. But figure it, you know, find the tools that work for you. Maybe write it down, have a little journal with you. If you find yourself in difficult moments that you need to tap into that wisdom that you've that you've reflected on before and then say, hey, you know what? I sometimes need that 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 crutch, right, to help me make better decisions in that moment. Um, I don't know, what, what would you say to people who, who struggle with like, hey, how do I get wiser and how do I improve myself in this aspect? I think we've already laid it out, right? It's just, I think, having a mindset to be open, to be accepting knowledge at all times, uh, be willing to apply that knowledge, to review it, right? You use, we have the logos at Stoics, right? You have logic and reason. That's what we have above all things, above the animals, all the other living things, plants, whatever, everything in the, the you know, the physical world is you have that. That, that's that's your tool. And through logic and reason, we have these four cardinal virtues as kind of filters. And so so from that, you know, that this what's what the outcome is there over time gives us a blueprint for, you know, leading that good life. Um, you don't get wisdom by snapping your fingers. You don't get wisdom by reading a book or having a good conversation. Like this is a great conversation, but th- there's work that needs to be done. And I always like that I like that to quote uh, the famous quote by Tolstoy, where he says, "It's not enough to know; we must apply. And it's not enough to will; must we must do." And so, this is what a, another underlying theme of Stoicism is not just about knowledge and logic and reason and the cardinal virtues. It's about applying it. It's a lived philosophy. It's about getting out there and and saying, "Hey, I picked up this information." and trying to make good with it. Use your gifts, your skills of logic and reason, whatever unique skills you might have in, in your intellect outside of that to you know, further progress that knowledge and then pass it down. That's what we're supposed to do. That's living the good life. That's doing everything that we can do. It's doing the best you can with what you have and, and passing it down. So I, I think wisdom is about patience, but it's also about discipline. It's about action, just like I said in that 
that Tolstoy uh, quote. But uh, the good news is this, as with anything in Stoicism, is it's, it's in your hands. You have so much power. You have so much control uh, to live the good life. You can be happy. You have purpose if you choose to look for it, right? If you choose to accept it. You have that with Stoicism and, and other disciplines too, but Benny and I believe that that this works well for us and works well for a lot of people as kind of a simple framework, uh, you know, to live by. And that and that's what it's all about. So virtue above all things, as Socrates says, and also uh, a lived philosophy is the only philosophy worth having. Keep those things simple. Get out there, get to work, have fun learning. It's fun to learn, right? And, you know, do something with it and pass it along improve humanity improve yourself yeah that's pretty that's pretty great and 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 you just wanted to kind of quickly add to that and i like how you said you know you have to have patience discipline and action really for for wisdom but i would add as well you know curiosity and maybe even you know not taking life too serious right just seeing the joy of it just making sure that you also appreciate the beauty and and i think i, I can't remember where but you know somewhere in, in if we mentioned about socrates i think it was plato somewhere that he would, you know, if he would see children playing somewhere, he would join in and game. Why? Because that's also something that you see part of life where you keep that joy. It doesn't always need to be stern, right? That we talked about, you said about, you know, the, the, the wise person would be like a, a an older man with a white beard. But it's also those who are able to enjoy life, to be able to see the joy and to see the, 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 the beauty of it. So it, it's not always necessary to be wise and be stern, but it's it's also good to see, hey, you know, this is the this is why I I am alive, right? Why am I alive? To enjoy it, to experience it, to be there. So we don't always have to be stern about it. And but I do pre I do agree, you know, it does take discipline and it does take patience. Because even being curious takes discipline. It, it it requires you to keep an open mind to say, hey, I can't make those judgments too quick. I've got to ask myself what is really going on. So no, I think that that's why it's really important to 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 focus on wisdom, to really look at it, what it is and what it means to you, right? Absolutely. I think we covered a lot of ground here. People are, if they're not wiser, they're maybe fatigued by talking about wisdom so much. But I know I got something from it. No, it's good stuff. And, and it is. It's it's There are four cardinal virtues. I think it's the most important of the four myself. Others agree. Uh, others may disagree, but it, it, it is absolutely important. And yeah, that's so I feel wiser by just having this conversation. So I appreciate it, Benny. Yeah, me too. And I, and I might reconsider my beard now that I know that it's not necessarily going to make me yeah. wiser. But uh, grow it, grow it out and encourage that gray and, and you'll people think you're smarter immediately. So that's there's a shortcut. No, it's not, not nice. It's not a true shortcut, but, you know, people may, people may think you're wiser. So that's 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 part of it. Right. Hey, you know, got to got to use all the straws that I can get. Right. All right, all right. Hey, good talk. Hey, we'll catch everyone next time. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and leaving a review. Your feedback helps us reach more like-minded listeners on this journey of self-improvement. And remember, you can reach us on X at Bryce at Stoic Bryce, Benny at The Stoic Padawan, or look at our website, streetstoics.com. You want to get in touch with us? Email us at streetstoics at gmail.com. Remember, virtue is the only good.